Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and this is our last video on the respiratory system. It'll cover the developmental aspects of the respiratory system, so let's go ahead and get started. So as a fetus is developing inside the uterus, basically what's going to happen is that the lungs are filled with fluid. The lungs are not fully inflated, though, until about a week, um, after, or, a week or two after birth. Um, surfactant is a fatty molecule that's made by the alveolar cells. We talked about surfactant in a couple of the other videos. I guess one of the other ones, um, we talked about how it forms a little bit later on during development. So basically, these are not present until fetal development is at the very, very end, and it may not be present among premature babies. So when um, people say that the baby's lungs hasn't been developed yet before birth, that usually means that the surfactant hadn't been laid down. It can happen anywhere between 28 and 30 weeks, but sometimes not up until a little bit later as well. There's a couple of homeostatic imbalances um, that can occur with babies and infants. So infant respiratory distress syndrome, or IRDS, this is when the surfactant production is inadequate, meaning that it's really hard for the baby to get oxygen into the body and carbon dioxide has a hard time getting out. Cystic fibrosis is an um, inherited genetic disorder that affects the, the lungs. It actually affects a lot of other systems too, but it affects the respiratory system as well. So it, there's an overproduction of thick mucus um, in the respiratory system, which makes breathing very, very difficult. Again, it has these patients have a hard time taking oxygen in and getting carbon dioxide out. Respiratory rates actually change a lot during a person's life. Newborns are going to breathe between 40 and 80 respirations, so that's ins and outs per minute. Infants typically will have 30 respirations per minute. When a child is about five years old, they'll have about 25 respirations per minute. Adults are between 12 and 18. And then rate is often increased somewhat with old age. So as a person enters their 60s and maybe higher, uh, it's likely that some of that respiration rate may, may change and get a little bit higher as well. Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. This is also called SIDS. Okay, um, whoops, I'm sorry here. Um, so SIDS is occurs with an apparently healthy infant and all of a sudden that healthy infant just stops breathing and dies in their sleep. Some cases are thought to be a problem of the neural respiratory control center. Um, so sometimes people say, well, if the, if the brain isn't sending the correct signals for a child to breathe, then they could die in their sleep, resulting in SIDS. One third of the cases appear to be due to a heart rhythm abnormality. So that means that um, some people think it's a brain thing. Others, um, those, those infants suffer from a heart rhythm issue. Um, and then recent research shows that there might be a genetic component to that as well. Asthma is another developmental aspect with the nervous system, or with the respiratory system. This occurs when you have chronic inflamed hypersensitive um, bronchial passages. Um, this response is um, occurring more often when you have irritations. So if you're um, having really slow breathing or coughing or wheezing, um, you're resulting in an, some sort of asthma issue, maybe even an asthma attack. And then as you age, the, your respiratory system changes a little bit. The elasticity of the lungs will decrease. Your vital capacity will decrease, meaning that you're not able to take in not as much oxygen as moving per breath. Your blood oxygen levels will decrease. Um, if you're, this it sort of explains your blood oxygen levels decrease. It does explain why respiration rates in um, the elderly are thought to go up. Um, probably has to do with trying to balance out that oxygen level. Um, the stimulating effects of the carbon dioxide will also decrease. The elderly are also um, hypo, um, hypoxic and they can exhibit sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is when you go through brief periods of um, when you're sleeping and you stop breathing. I maybe should tell you about this, the stimulating effects. Um, as carbon dioxide builds up in, let's say, you or me, um, 
our brains will send a signal that say, hey, you need to get rid of this carbon dioxide. Go ahead and take a breath. Exhale, get some, get some new oxygen in here. Okay, but as you get older, that stimulating off that simulating effect of getting rid of carbon dioxide decreases a lot. And then um, these people, um, the elderly are more at a higher risk for respiratory tract infections. All right, well that covers um, the last part of the respiratory system and I hope you found that helpful.